Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the Baltimore Ravens 2019 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. And if you're new to the channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Now, if all that stuff out of the way, let's get to the first pick of the draft, which, of course, is Marquise Brown, uh, wide receiver out of Oklahoma. Now, when you look at his uh, production data, 73.23 in terms of his market share, uh, college market share production data at the wide receiver position. Uh, in terms of the averages at the position, his averages are below the all-pro average, pro bowl average, and starter average. Uh, so he is close to the starter average, but just is a little bit below what the average is for a starting wide receiver. But when you look at the thresholds at the position, he does hit at least above the three-time pro bowl threshold and the long-term starter threshold. So I'd say Marquise Brown's data pushes him more towards Pro Bowl to starter potential at the position uh, in terms of his overall uh, production data. Um, in terms of athleticism traits, there really isn't much to say because there isn't a lot of testing out there uh, in terms of athleticism. But it's still a good profile, still has decent potential, did play a relatively tough uh, competition, and I think there is a good chance that he's going to end up becoming at least a starter at the next level. Uh, and then, of course, we get to the next week of the draft, which, of course, is Jalen Ferguson, the edge uh, from Louisiana Tech. Uh, when you look at his uh, production data, which is 80.65 in terms of solo tackle data, 92.09 in terms of sack data, and 94.70 in terms of uh, tackle for loss data, pretty much hits all the sort of thresholds you're looking for in terms of all-pro potential and pro bowl potential. The averages, he hits more of the pro bowl averages than the all-pro averages. But his biggest issue is just athleticism traits. 36.20 in terms of uh, explosion, 39.88 in terms of speed, and 0.60 in terms of flexibility. Um, there has never been a multiple all-pro, multiple Pro Bowl edge rusher to have a 0 .60 flexibility score. So there definitely have been some guys who were not explosive and not fast, but definitely had really good explode, you know, very good flexibility testing and went on to become, you know, all-pro Pro Bowl. Uh, but that's the only issue with Ferguson is that he has more of a starter profile. And not only that, but I mean, there hasn't even been a long-term starter with a .60 flexibility score. So I don't really know what happened at the Pro Day because these flexibility numbers are from the Pro Day. But it just was not it. It's not what he wanted it to be. Um, so that's the only sort of question mark with Jalen Ferguson is that he looks more like a potential bust than as someone who's going to be a really, really successful edge rusher at the next level. does have the production to be a starter based on his college production, but his athleticism is definitely very suspect. Uh, then, of course, we get to the next pick of the draft, which, of course, is Miles Boykin, wide receiver out of Notre Dame. Uh, when you look at his uh, production data, 52.53 in terms of his passing yards mark share production. Uh, doesn't hit the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, or long-term starter area. And when you look at the averages, again, woefully below what the average All-Pro score, Pro Bowl score, and starter score is. But his redeeming factor is athleticism testing. 99.66 in terms of explosion, 92.41 in terms of speed, and 96.79 in terms of uh, flexibility for his size. Extremely above average in terms of all those areas. And again, the only question mark is the production data. Um, wide receiver, it really matters a lot more to be really productive than it does to be really athletic. But he could become something. I mean, there definitely is that potential here. But he definitely would have to become an outlier if he does become... Uh, you know something that's that's really 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 great for a consistent season. So that's the only sort of question mark for Miles Boykin. Then of course we get the next pick of the draft, which of course is Justice Hill, running back out of Oklahoma State. Look at his mark share production, 50.23 in terms of uh, his uh, production data. Doesn't hit the All Pro threshold, five time Pro Bowl threshold, or three time Pro Bowl threshold. Uh, when you look at the averages at the position, nowhere near the All Pro average, Pro Bowl average, or starter average. He does have good athleticism traits. He did have above average explosion testing and, st and uh, speed testing. Speed was probably the biggest thing that kind of popped on him in terms of his data. But his production is just not where it needs to be. And this is not that strong of a running back class. So I wouldn't expect that much to come from Justice Hill. He definitely could be a rotational back. He could make some big splash plays here and there. But in terms of long-term success, it would be very, very unlikely that that happens for him. Then, of course, you get the next pick which, of course, is Ben Powers out of Oklahoma. I do not have a lot of athleticism testing on him yet, so I really can't say much about him, but other than, you know, he was a offensive lineman from Oklahoma. And then, of course, we get to the next pick, which is Amon Marshall. 
cornerback out of USC. When you look at his data, 70.84 in terms of solo tackle data, 46.51 in terms of pass deflection data. His solo tackle data pretty much hits everywhere it needs to hit in terms of uh, you know, Pro Bowl potential, in terms of the averages at the position and the thresholds. His pass deflection data, though, doesn't hit where it needs to hit in terms of all pro potential. And when you look at the averages at the position, he's woefully below what the average should be for all pro and pro bowl cornerback uh, based on the data. So his issue is just, again, with the averages and the, and the thresholds at the position. Um, based on athleticism testing, he didn't have a full athletic profile, but he did have at least decent athleticism traits. So I think he could, at the very least, become a long-term starter at the position, but in terms of like really special outcomes, it'd be very unlikely with Ramon Marshall. Then, of course, we get to probably the, the best pick for them, uh, Dalen Mack, defensive tackle out of Texas A&M. Uh, based on his uh, production data, really, really, really great uh, in terms of his, uh, his uh, production data. Uh, he had a 63.06 uh, in terms of solo tackle data, 90.54 in terms of uh, sack data, and 63.33 in terms of uh, tackle for loss data. When you look at his uh, data, Compared to the uh, the averages at the, at the nose tackle position, he does look more like a starter than an all-pro player based on the averages at the nose tackle position. Um, but he does have really great athleticism traits, 86.54 in terms of explosion, 96.48 in terms of speed, and 67.75 in terms of flexibility for his size. All those marks are really fantastic, and I think there's a very good shot that he becomes a long-term starter or better at the position um, because he just has really great he has at least above average production traits, played in a really tough competition, and has great athleticism traits. So I would expect at least a starter here with a guy like Dalen Mack. And then the last pick of the draft, which of course is Trace McSorley, quarterback out of Penn State. When you look at his best single season high school production score and FBS score, 93.20 in terms of high school data and 89.47 in terms of FBS data, pretty much hits all the thresholds you're looking for at the position. His issue just comes to the career data. Uh, Career-wise, he had a 66.98 in terms of his, uh, you know, uh, average career FBS score. Doesn't hit the All-Pro threshold, but does hit at least above the Pro Bowl threshold. And when you look at the averages, he definitely doesn't hit the All-Pro average, Pro Bowl average, or starter average. He pretty much has a similar profile to Andy Dalton. So if Trace McSorley becomes Andy Dalton, don't be surprised where you heard it first. <laughs> um, but yeah, he definitely has Andy Dalton-ish traits based on production data. Uh, so it shouldn't be surprising if he goes on to become an Andy Dalton-like guy. But I don't think he's ever going to become like a really special franchise player at the next level. Uh, so overall, when you look at the Baltimore Ravens draft class, I would say it is just okay. It's not fantastic. There definitely are some picks here and there that, that should hit really well. Dalen Mack is one of those picks um, that, that should hit pretty well. Uh, there definitely are some starters in here. Mon Marshall has starter potential. Trace McSorley, of course, has starter potential. Uh, Marquise Brown has starter potential. Miles Boykin, based on athleticism traits, could become something interesting. But there's just a lot of just outliers in this class. There's a lot of players that are more likely, based on the paper, they look like backups. They look like reserve types. So this is not the greatest draft class ever. There definitely are some players that I think will hit. There's a lot of missing data in this class as well because you got guys like Marquise Brown who didn't do athleticism testing. Uh, you got guys like Ben Powers who didn't do any athleticism testing, at least that we know of. So this class just doesn't look as good as it could possibly be uh, because some of the players they picked, there's just missing data or the data that's on here is just not where it needs to be in terms of long-term success. So this is just one of those classes that I think there'll be some good players from it but I don't think that they will be as ecstatic about the entire list uh, just because of that potential. And maybe they have different expectations for their draft picks. They might have expectations that they just want them to be backups. They just want them to be contributors on the team. But well, my data and what my ultimate goal when I'm grading these teams is what is the potential that they can become a starter? What is the potential that they can go on to become a long-term starter, a long-term impact player on the team, and not just a backup, not just a reserve, not just a guy that, that works really hard in camp. Somebody that's actually going to make a difference on this roster for years to come. And that is the only issue that this, this class really lacks, is those types of players. 
And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find me on the work at DraftCoburn at WordPress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification bell in case you want to be reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>